Let us pray. God of new beginnings, we delight in the light of this day born out of your love. As you conduct a spiritual EKG of our hearts, you know what we need before we even ask. As we engage in this sacrament of pause, some are ecstatic, others are unsure, some still wonder how they were even accepted into Duke. <laughs> Others are confident that Duke made the right decision to accept them. <laughs> Some question, will I fit in? Will I get along with my roommate? Will I be smart enough? Will I be accepted? Calm our fears, not that we cease questioning, but that we experience the full joy of being alive today with bright hopes for tomorrow. Even as we stand in this hallowed basketball temple Cameron indoor stadium, <laughs> let what this building represents guide our days ahead. The spirit of community and collaboration and care and commitment and challenge and creativity and cheerfulness. May we embody these values inside and outside the classroom as we embark on this new educational journey together. Whether we win or lose, or get hurt or become tired or go out of bounds sometimes or make successful passes of kindness on the quad or slam dunks of excellence in class or even miss attempted shots in relationships within our dorms. Let us be a Duke community that celebrates with those who celebrate and mourn with those who mourn, recognizing that we may go fast alone, but we will go farther together. We know this to be true on this day as we realize that we didn't arrive at this institution solely by our own will and resources. Someone paid for us, prayed for us, encouraged us, taught us, and mentored us to bring us to this day. We give thanks for the earthly cloud of witnesses who have made it possible for us to be here. We remember them even as we experience this blue devil joy today through faculty, administrators, staff, and students who will lead us to a deeper sense of gratitude for every good gift, including this university and one another. In this fractured world, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken and let this class of 2022 be a class that the Hall of Fame of Humanity would remember because they knew what it meant to learn and live and love in community. Amen.
can say it. <laughs> Hello, class of 2022. Welcome. I am so deeply honored to stand in front of you today as your student body president. Today, and really since you've been accepted to this university, the administration, faculty, staff, and other students have been telling you just how great Duke University is. They've probably told you about the immense opportunities that lie before you, about the abundance of classes in just about every subject you could ever ask for, about your chances to study both abroad and under renowned professors right here on campus. They most certainly told you about basketball games, and I hope they've told you about the tents you may commit to living in. I'm sure they've told you about the sometimes overwhelming number of student organizations you can become a part of, that you can make a difference in. And I'm almost certain they've told you in some way or another that everywhere you look, there is a person worth getting to know. Here at Duke, I've had the opportunity to participate in FOCUS, to work for an NGO in South Africa through Duke Engage, and to join student organizations that have pushed me to expand the way I think about myself and the world. But even among all of these opportunities and experiences, I think the most important thing I can talk to you about today is people. Because of all the things Duke has to offer, it is the people that will make this place home for you. This is the reason today I want to talk to you about meeting the people of this university. Since my first year fall break, I have participated in a retreat called Common Ground. Common Ground is a retreat that takes place each semester where we discuss socioeconomic status, race, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. Common Ground is, and most likely always will be, the most emotional, profound experience I've had while at Duke University. This fall will be my sixth retreat. But let me be clear. It is a common ground surrounded by people who do not look like me, who do not think like me, who do not share my lived experiences that I have grown the most in my time at Duke. It is because of the people at common ground that I come back every semester. And as much as I would love it if you would all do common ground, I would like to think that East Campus is your own version of the retreat living in the same room with or maybe on the same hall as people who are unfamiliar will be your first glimpse at learning to value the people of this university. It is how you treat this chance, the chance to get to know those who are totally different from you, that will help you to become whoever it is you want to be today and for the next four years. More than any class before you, you all have the opportunity to learn from those who are different from you, starting with the roommate or roommates that you only just met. And even if you don't have a roommate this year, you have the same opportunity to learn from those who speak differently, act differently, and think differently than you yourself do. Just take a moment to look down your hall or in your classes or at the table next to you in Marketplace. You see, human beings rarely choose to get to know those who are different from them, rarely choose to become friends with those who are different from them. It can be uncomfortable, at least at first. I can tell you from experience that Duke students are not any different. But I can also tell you from experience that it will be worth it. In fact, I know from experience that given the chance the people of Duke University will help you discover your passions, become a part of your fondest memories, and give you the support that will be crucial to the next four years of your life. If we had the time, I would tell you about each person I've met here who has added to my passions, my memories, and my support system. I would tell you about my friend who shares my passion for working with students, um, and about my friend who has spent the last year immersed in campus activism. I would tell you about my friend who has inspired me to consider becoming a juvenile public defender, and about my friend who I met during the O-Week Carnival and who I've been friends with ever since. I would tell you about my tenting co-captain and about my friend who was there with me for my first Perkins all-nighter. I would tell you about my friend who I met during Pub Paul 301, about my friend who's been there with me for every common ground, and about my friend who has selflessly helped me pass all of my public policy classes. If I had the time, I would tell you about my friend who was the first person to tell me that he believed I could be DSG president. If we had the time, I would tell you about the impact that each of these people has had on me, just to prepare you for the impact that the people of Duke will have on you. 
Unfortunately, we don't have the time for me to do that, but luckily for you, you have the next four years to meet these people. You have the next four years to meet people who will become a part of your fondest memories. You have the next four years to meet people who will change your worldview, your ambitions, and your very thoughts. And you might think that you need to meet these people as soon as you leave this building, but I assure you that it's okay if you don't. It's okay if it takes some time. It's okay if at first campus feels a little lonely because we've all felt that. I have felt that. It took me a semester or maybe even a year, if we're being honest, there are still moments even going into senior year that are a little lonely. But it has been the times when I have opened myself up to the people of this university that loneliness has felt the most distant. If I could leave you with anything, it would be that I hope in these next four years you find your common ground. I hope you put yourself in situations where friendships might not seem likely, but you find them anyway. And I hope these friends, mentors, and peers are the same people with whom you laugh, cry, go to basketball games and parties in the library, and spend way too much time sitting with in marketplace. I hope these are the same people who become intrinsically and unconditionally tied to what Duke University means to you. Welcome to Duke, class of 2022. I cannot wait for you to meet, to befriend, and to become the people that make this place home. Throughout these next four years, I wish you the very best of luck at finding your common ground. Thank you. Christina, that was great. That was. We did a good job admitting you. <laughs> and you. Uh, here we are. Good morning. In some ways, this is the culmination of a college admissions process that I know for most of you started years ago and that I expect you'll now do your best to forget. But before that happens, let's take a final moment to appreciate how each of you stood out in a process where over 37,000 applicants from over 10,000 high schools and 500 colleges wanted to be here now. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about yourselves. You've come from 46 states, 850 cities and towns, you represent 74 countries. You've come from Bettendorf and Boise, Celebration and Chico, Honolulu and Hyderabad, Sebastopol and Seoul, from Sioux Falls and Sinking Springs. And for those of you that seek new heights, you might want to meet your classmates from Apex, High Point, Summit, and superior. <laughs> and for those of you that grew up wearing heavy coats in the winter, you might want to meet your classmate from the small city of Frostproof. <laughs> the friendly city is its motto. So you and your classmates have won national art competitions. You've built and run a successful business with 11 employees and 1,200 clients. You've taught yourself Norwegian and created your own language. You've made the 50 high schoolers to watch list. You've delayed professional dance training to come to Duke. And my favorite this year, a young woman whose research on the differences between the venoms of male and female black Florida bark scorpions required, and I quote, collecting scorpions after nightfall using a UV flashlight in a dark, humid, mosquito-ridden forest. So after that, Duke, <laughs> how hard can it be? So I'd like to talk a little bit about how you were chosen. And this might surprise you, but your academic credentials actually had little to do with it. Once we saw that you were one of the bright ones, 
At that point, whether your grades and test scores were a little better or a little worse than someone else's really didn't matter. But there are five things that we looked for that did matter and that did make a difference. Now, here they are. First, you knew what to do when an opportunity presented itself. And as Christina mentioned, and as a lot of people have mentioned, this place is incredible when it comes to opportunities. And we like that you know how to take advantage of them. Second, you found a way to make something better. You may, not, you may not even be aware of the positive impact you've had, but we were. And we were excited to learn, and you'll be excited to learn, that you'll know how to make more of an impact spending your time here. Third, you were reflective and open. Some of you wrote about difficult moments or difficult circumstances in your life, and we were with your resilience, your insight, and your willingness to ask for help. It's not always easy here, especially if you choose to be challenged. And there may be times where you feel a little bit out of your depth. That's not only normal, it's expected. And that's when you'll see how supportive a place Duke can be. All you have to do is ask. Fourth, you were kind, and you were supportive, and you were a good friend. One of the defining and wonderful characteristics of Duke is how the students support each other. That's important to us, and we saw that in you, and we valued it. And finally, finally, you weren't perfect. And we didn't expect you to be perfect. Perfect is kind of boring. Imperfect and striving is a lot more interesting. And if there's one thing students are, it's interesting. So every one of you has earned your place here. Every one of you belongs here. We're proud of what you've done. More importantly, we're proud of what you'll become, and we'll be proud to call you Duke alumni. So before I conclude, I'd like to invite Valerie Ashby, Dean of Trinity College of Arts and Sciences, Ravi Bellamkonda, Dean of Pratt School of Engineering, and Gary Bennett, Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education, to please come join me. It gives me great pleasure to present to them, to President Price, and to the university community the smartest, kindest, most interesting class yet, the Duke Class of 2022. Thank you. Trinity College of Arts and Sciences maintains our university's historic commitment to the liberal arts. In the classroom and throughout their lives as undergraduates, our students have the opportunity to encounter a full diversity of perspectives, which will prepare them to become the broad-minded and principled leaders of tomorrow. Having heard Dean Gutentag's introduction, I have great confidence that you are well qualified to pursue the course of study at Duke. On behalf of the faculty of the Trinity College of Arts and Sciences, I am delighted to welcome the class of 2022 to our vibrant university community. Welcome. Duke's Pratt School of Engineering takes great pride in preparing our students to design and build the innovations of the future. You will learn from faculty members who are experts in data science and computing, in biomedical and environmental research, in mechanical and civil engineering, and you will have the opportunity to put to practice what you learn in the classroom from your very first days here. I share Dean Ashby's great confidence in the qualifications of this class. On behalf of the faculty of the Pratt School of Engineering, I'm pleased to welcome you class of 2022 to Duke University. Welcome. I 
our undergraduate degree programs allow students to broaden their understanding of the world and to develop a deeper sense of their place in it. As Duke students, you will have a greater opportunity than ever before to bring about meaningful change, whether through your learning, service, or engagement with your neighbors. I join my colleagues in being impressed by this most amazing group. On behalf of the entire university community, I hereby accept the class of 2022 and welcome you to Duke University. Parents and colleagues, please join me in congratulating the newest members of the Duke family. Good morning. Well, now that you have been officially accepted to Duke, I am delighted to greet you for the first time as the newest members of our campus community. I also want to recognize Provost and Chief Academic Officer Sally Kornbluth, Vice President for Student Affairs Larry Moneta, Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education Gary Bennett, our deans and administrators, and all of the faculty members who make this community so exceptional. Today's ceremony, as Dean Gutentag noted, comes at the end of a very long process that began when you submitted your applications last fall. You worked hard throughout high school to distinguish yourselves and to prepare you for your time here. You were selected, as you've heard, from the largest and most accomplished pool of applicants in Duke history. And after a summer of anticipation and a particularly hot and humid morning, you've now moved in your boxes, you've made your beds, and met those first few friends on your hallway. Now those of you who, like me, are transplants to this beautiful corner of the world may have been a bit taken aback by the humidity and the heat. I spent yesterday morning helping to unload cars on East Campus and got so hot I had to run home, shower, and change my shirt. And things I will tell you are not much better today in these robes. <laughs> and yes, since we are in a gym, sweat is clearly on my mind. I'm tempted to keep with the theme and to lean on the classic advice of innumerable convocation and commencement addresses. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's the big stuff that matters. But while this tired truism is certainly well-intentioned, it occurs to me that it gets it wrong. If we're honest, we already spend way too much time worrying about the major moments and undertakings. So I would like to propose a minor but important variation. What you should really not sweat is the big stuff. Now that may induce a little sweat in your parents, but I have my reasons for rewriting this dictum. The first reason is that the big stuff isn't always a great guide. It can even lead us in the wrong direction. Focusing on what we do rather than on who we are, on the sum of our accomplishments rather than on our own innate talents and gifts, can make our successes less sweet and the inevitable bumps along the way harder to overcome. As fluent speakers of the language of the digital world, you might appreciate how easily this phenomenon is exacerbated by social media. Instagram and Snapchat reinforce the idea that everyone else is succeeding beyond their wildest dreams, is living a perfect life of flower crowns and matcha lattes and pale pink wallpaper. Well, unfortunately, the curated life hides the confusion and the dissatisfaction that can come from the pursuit of perfection, especially when our peers make it look so easy. 
I saw a meme that summed this up. A prim, proper show dog was depicted next to a crazed, uh, delighted doodle covered in mud from swimming in a pond. And the caption read, me on Instagram and me in real life. <laughs> so as we set off on this academic year together, your first at Duke, let's focus on being ourselves, not our Instagram selves. Instead of worrying about failure, let's remember that moments of adversity and challenge often teach us the most. Most important, let's not allow false standards of perfection or high expectations get the best of us. Your career at Duke isn't going to be perfect. You're going to hit some bumps along the way. An early semester paper that comes back marked up by your professor. That first choice Duke Engage project that you might not get. The friendships that may cool over time. When these things happen, it will not help you one iota to be hard on yourself. What will matter is what you make of them, how you deal with them, and how you learn from them. And that brings me to the second reason you should not sweat the big stuff. It's not really about you, at least not you alone. Our measure in life will largely be what we are able to do together. As you navigate the bumps and bruises of the coming years, remember that you have the full support of your professors, your classmates, and Duke's exceptional residential living and wellness staff. And I hope that your parents, too, will remember that with time, these perceived setbacks provide an opportunity, an important opportunity, to emerge a better writer a more engaged member of the community, a more mature partner or friend. Now take a look at these banners, a bit obscured by the darkness above you, which capture some of the great moments in Blue Devil history. Some of them celebrate individual athletes, but most of them celebrate our team wins. And every single one of our individual champions will be quick to point out that what allowed their success was the support of their coaches and their teammates. When those championship teams lost games, and they did, they adjusted, mainly by figuring out not just how each player could be their best, but how each could make others best, how each could lean on others to do the things that challenged them individually. And it's no wonder that one of the most common statements that we hear coming out of post-game interviews is, we'll take it one game at a time. By not sweating the big stuff, by taking our minds off that big prize at the end of the season and focusing instead on the here and the now, and by leaning more on each other and lifting the burdens of great expectations from our shoulders, we begin to realize our full human potential. Now, we've all seen the desire to win drive some of our peers from time to time to try to do too much, to go it alone, and not engage the full team. The burdens of great expectations should be shared. So let's remember we're all in this together. For you to be your best, and for Duke, to be its best. We want you to lean on the full support of your professors, your advisors, and your classmates. Now, the third and final reason I tell you not to sweat the big stuff is that if we're focused on the end game, we tend to overlook the beauty of the little moments along the way. Duke will prepare you very well for successful careers, and that's probably one of the major reasons you chose to come here. But don't get so caught up in life after Duke that you never give yourself the time to deeply enjoy life while you're here. The chances are moments you'll remember long after you graduate won't be the career fairs, the job interviews, the hours spent studying in the library. 
No, the richness of Duke lies in the late night conversations with classmates about politics, the spike ball games on the quad in that first warm day of spring, in walking through the gardens with a friend, or taking those classes on a complete lark that opened up an entirely new world of ideas. There will be few times in your life when you'll be surrounded by such astounding diversity of thought and perspective, when you'll have not only the license but the charge, our charge, to explore new ideas and try out new activities, and when you will share a sense of purpose and passion with hallmates and classmates and lifelong friends. All you have to do is make the conscious choice to embrace it. Get out there, get engaged. But not so engaged that you forget to take care of yourself. And this last bit of advice I give in all seriousness, get some sleep. <laughs> None of us get enough these days, and we cannot be our best without it. Now, a few minutes ago, I told you that Duke chose you from a pool of extremely well-qualified candidates, and her, having heard uh, Dean Gutentag's presentation, I'm very confident that we made the right choice. But now the choice is up to you. I hope you will choose to experience the full diversity and richness of life at Duke. Choose to put the big stuff aside and embrace the small stuff the moments of curiosity and laughter with your new friends. Choose to look out for those growth opportunities in times that feel like failures. And above all, choose to become a true Blue Dookie, an enthusiastic member of this noble academic community. We are so very, very excited to welcome you to the Duke community. Thank you. And now it is my great pleasure uh, to welcome Catherine Waugh, class of 2020, who will lead us in our alma mater, Dear O Duke, which you will soon know very well by heart. Good morning. As you near the conclusion of your first official gathering as undergraduate students of Duke University, I ask you to join me in a time-honored tradition, the singing of the alma mater. Dear Old Duke, as it is now popularly known, was composed by Robert Henry James, a member of the Trinity College class of 1924. He said he was inspired to write a song that would show his gratitude and devotion to his university. I hope that the words of the alma mater will ring true for you, not only in your years at Duke, but throughout your lives and that your time at this place will inspire you ever to turn, indeed, to dear old Duke. I will sing the alma mater through once, and then I invite you to join me in singing it. Please remain standing throughout the entire closing procession. Congratulations, and welcome to Duke.
Thank you. 